Today I'm going to be sharing some tips on painting fur on this bear in acrylics, and we get to watch the reaction of somebody opening one of my paintings. This was the chickadee that I drew or painted for my Luminance colored pencil review. It is still one of my favorite colored pencil pieces. It was also the first Patreon video that I ever made available for you guys. So this piece has just been special to me and I've hung on to it all these years. It finally went to an amazing home. I'm so excited just watching the reaction of who this was gifted to. It just makes it all, it's just cool. It's cool as an artist. I don't have words, neither did she. Let's take a look. Let's give us shoveling snow on the parking. Got it? Okay. No. Oh my goodness, what is in this box? Oh, no. Oh, we're really wanting to know, and I can't get into it. <laughs> Just beautiful. It's just amazing work. Yeah, she does such a good job and she's so inspiring to me. And um, I don't know where I would be without you, Lakri. I watch your videos all the time. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Well, I'm pretty sure I can't top that, but let's go ahead and get onto this painting. Anyway, if you are supporters over on Patreon for as little as $4 a month, you can get access to over 300 art lessons available for you right now as soon as you sign up and a new one every single week. If you are not sure if Patreon is going to be a fit for you, head over to my Patreon video library. The link will be in the video description and you can see what lessons I currently have over there. Starting with this guy, I started with the uh, just solid dark background. I am working on a Fredericks Blue Label Ultra Smooth Canvas, and just for transparency, I am sponsored by Fredericks. They did provide me with this canvas for, well, all my paintings. They're the only canvas that I, I work with. But I wanted to go with this canvas because I needed a really smooth surface, knowing that I was going to be doing a lot of fine detail, and in this case, airbrushing. Now, if you are over on Patreon, I do have a demonstration on how to do this, this sort of look without an airbrush. So don't be afraid of trying something something similar if you don't have one. But I went through and I'm just trying to make something very out of focus. We'll dry that, my paint was starting to run. Had that on a little thick. Got some rays of light coming in. I just want something super blurry. That's the goal, with or without an airbrush. I just want something somewhat out of focus. And that's going to help the bear to feel closer to the viewer. It just really pulls attention into the bear. So my next step was to draw the bear onto the canvas. You can do this one of two ways. You can use a white charcoal pencil. Don't use a regular graphite pencil. For one, it doesn't show up well, especially on this dark background. But the other thing is, even though it doesn't show up well while you're painting, let's say your background was light enough that you thought the pencil would show up, it won't show up well enough to see to work, but somehow that graphite line always ends up showing through your acrylic painting layers. I just do not like graphite for drawing. So I've used either a white charcoal pencil or I can draw things out on a piece of tracing paper or sketch it out onto a big piece of paper, trace it onto tracing paper, and then use transfer paper to transfer that image cleanly onto my canvas without messing anything up. I don't have any eraser marks or smudges. It just keeps your work nice and clean. I don't like to freehand sketch onto my canvas. It, it just, it's it gets messy. I don't want messy. So my next step, I am using a rake brush and I have a link to, actually I have a whole video showing you how to use these and the brushes that I'm using here. I'll put a link to that in the description or a pop-up window most likely. 
And I'm using some white. This one, I believe, is unbleached titanium white. Either would work here. And I'm just starting to block in the texture of the fur. So that's going to be my first tip for you when painting fur. I'm not worrying about color. I'm not worrying about anything other than let's build up the fur texture. Make it easy on yourself if you can. So what I find is if you break up two difficult elements, so one, making fur have the right texture, and then two, the color, break those up into separate separate jobs, essentially, or separate por portions of the painting. So I'm just worrying about getting the fur going in the right direction, about the right length. They don't have to be exact, but I do want close. That way, when I'm going into the color mixing, I've already done most of the hard part here by building up or mapping out where that fur goes. My next stage is to start painting. So I'm using, I believe that is raw sienna mixed in with some deep violet and burnt sienna. Those are my main colors on most of the brown portions of the bear. And I'm just glazing that over the fur that was already there. So this is thinned out with a decent amount of water to make it translucent. Now those paints are already fairly translucent with the Liquitex Basics. That, that is my absolute favorite acrylic paint. I've tried other paints. I've even done the Liquitex Heavy Body. I've got a full set of those. I've got the Soft Body. For the way that I paint and the way that I glaze, Liquitex Basics just work better for me. They are archival, they are light fast, or at least the colors I use. I choose all the light fast colors. So that is what I'm using there. Once I get my basic glaze on, and this is a horrible hot mess at this stage. So when you're, when you're painting and you hit the stage, you're like, oh my gosh, this looks like I painted it with my feet blindfolded. You, you blindfolded, not your feet. I guess it wouldn't make a difference one way or another. Anyway, when you hit that stage, don't give up. Keep layering. That is a normal, ugly layer, ugly stage. And you can see that here. This looks terrible. You want to keep layering and building until it looks good. That's really the trick with painting. Layer till it looks good. So I'm coming through, I'm using a liner brush and getting some of these smaller little hairs in there. And I like to paint whatever is farthest in the back and move my way forward. That way, let's say for the green of the background, let's say I painted the bear first. When I go to airbrush the green, I'm going to likely get some of that green onto the bear and I don't want that overlapping. I do, however, want the fur of the bear overlapping the green, those little strands coming out. So it works better, I find, to paint my background first and then work my way forward. And even here, I painted that leg, got most of the detailing or the, the lighting, the main uh, color layers in there first and now I can paint the fur on the chin. All of this area overlaps that leg which is further behind. So start in the back and work your way forward. That more often than not will make things easier on you. Using a lot of unbleached titanium white in here for these highlights. We often want to jump to just tr straight titanium white as bright as bright can go for our highlights. I like to go more mid-range and then work my way from there. Get my brights brighter, my darks darker. But if you start from the lightest you can go, your titanium white, you can't go lighter from there. So I really like to start more mid like you see here and then build from that. And if you don't have unbleached titanium white, just add a little bit of your raw sienna or raw under, I mean, really any of your brownish warm tones, just a touch of that to it. And that is pretty much going to be what unbleached titanium white would, would look like. You can mix your own. It is a color I use often enough, though. I find it easier just to buy a tube specifically of unbleached titanium white. Now, as I come on top of this, adding more fur, I want to make sure that those brown areas show through. I'm not trying to cover everything with that unbleached titanium white. And I don't care when I'm painting fur if every single strand is exact to my reference photo. Typically, none of them are. What I care about is getting it close. Are they going about the right direction? That's what's going to matter more. I'm not sitting there going 15 bits of fur going this direction, 14 going, it. we don't need to be that exact. You just wanna capture the general motion, the general feel of that fur. Now this shadow, this is a mostly gray tone. So I started by mixing titanium white and Mars black, and then added a little bit of my blue and deep violet that I had already been using in this painting. I added some of those colors to it. So I've got this nice grayish blue color for the shadowed area. We often think of shadows as just black. That's going to be very flat. And while sometimes, yes, that does work, in this case, it, it really wouldn't have been the right choice. It's really more of a bluish kind of purple gray color gray being the pre predominant color there. So that's why I like whenever I'm, I'm mixing a, anything where you think grayish, start by mixing the gray. So black and white, and then add your tint of whatever color to that. It just makes it easier. You don't waste as much paint trying to mix the perfect tone. 
Another tip I have for you, I actually had a hard time telling how gray that, that shadow should be. I was mixing something that was a bit too saturated in color. I have pulled my reference photo into Photoshop and used an eyedropper or color matching tool. And I've got some old videos showing you how to do that. I'll have a card pop up showing you those. But I pulled in this color matching tool and was able to easily see, whoa, that needs to be way more gray than what I had painted. And it made a huge difference. I just, there was an illusion going on between the browns and the purple tones there. My brain was just trying to make it too saturated. Once I turned it more gray, it looked so much better. So that color matching tip, just to give you an idea of what the color you're looking at is, can be really helpful if you ever are struggling going, is that more yellow or is it more brown? Is it more, I just can't tell. Use that color matching tool. It really does make things easy. So as I'm coming on through these final details, I'm not using the rake brush so much. I switch over to a liner brush where I can get finer, more, more, what is the word I'm looking for? More specific, I guess, detail with the rake brush. If you overdo a rake brush, you can end up with something that ends up a bit too unnatural, too uniform. So if you don't know what a rake brush is, if you put your hand in front of you, your fingers are together, there is your typical Taclon bristled filbert. Or, well, I guess it doesn't have to be Taclon bristled, but your typical filbert. I use Taclon most often with acrylics. Now, if you spread your fingers out, there's your rake brush. So one brush stroke, you get a whole bunch of little hair strokes, which is great, but you don't want to do everything with that, that rake brush, as handy as it is. That's why you'll see me go through at the very end with a liner brush and just define those little details, define the clumps of fur a bit more. So rake brushes are handy, but they shouldn't be the only brush you use to make fur or grass. A little bit more glazing on the color there. Final details, now I can pull out some straight titanium white, get those brightest, brightest highlights along the edge of his muzzle there. We've got some on his chin, along his nose, just a little bit, but the majority of those highlights are my unbleached titanium white, so a little bit more toned down. And you can see having that bright, bright white along the edge of his nose, how it really pushes that forward and it gives you that more three-dimensional look. If you wanted to paint this exact painting along with me over on Patreon, that is over there. I believe there's about three hours for that lesson. The link will be in the video description. Speaking of Patreon, I've got a quick update for those of you who get your postcards each month. I'm actually caught up, which is kind of crazy for me. The June postcards are going out today, actually, the day I'm recording this video. So those of you in the US, look out for that. That will probably be showing up to you guys within the next few days. Those outside of the US, I've had it take anywhere from a couple of weeks to a couple of months to get to you. So your, yours will be a little bit long, further out, but those are all going out today. And I just finished putting the labels on the July postcards and ordered the stamps. So those will likely be going out next week. So you've got some postcards coming to you. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week. Don't forget to click on the bell notification icon because YouTube is terrible about notifying anyone when new content goes up. And follow me over on MeWe, with is basically like Facebook back when Facebook was good and you actually if you're following someone you get to see everything that they post versus dealing with the stupid algorithm that Facebook comes up with. So definitely check out MeWe. Link to that is in the video description along with my email newsletter. I send out one email once a week letting you know whatever new videos went up and what the current my brain just shut off. What the live screen live screen live stream. Oh my gosh, I need a nap. Schedule is going to be for that week.